Aaron, Hello. you out there? Hey, how's hey. it going? Yes. Hi, right. how are you? I'm good, good. I hope everyone's doing all right tonight. I guess it's time to uh, start this party. So uh, welcome everyone to part two of Bingo Bongo's activities, games, and teaching ideas for online lessons. Uh, last week was really fun. We went at it for a couple hours and covered a ton of stuff, but pretty uh, on a superficial level, I think. Um, so there are a lot of questions kind of left over, but we had a lot, of good, um, a lot of good feedback from that. So we decided let's do a second round. So in case you uh, weren't here last week or you don't know me, I'm Jeremy. Uh, I started Step by Step Ekaiwa and Bingo Bongo Learning. And today, uh, my co-host, why don't we find him out there? How you doing? Oh, hi guys. My name is uh, Aaron. And uh, yeah, I also work at Step by Step Ekaiwa. Thank you very much for coming. Did you get a haircut, Aaron? I did indeed. Thank you very much. For all noticing. right. I thought yeah. You I don't. Well, I don't. I don't see you. I mean, we're all isolated, social distancing, <laughs> so we're we're in our own different classrooms. But yeah, it looks good. Exactly. All right. Well, let's get started. Uh, so today, I'm going to try and keep this uh, a little bit shorter, and uh, we'll you know get to the point. Uh, do some demonstrations, some tutorials, and then we'll open it up for questions at the end. So uh, let's jump right into my uh, my slideshow I've got prepared here. And just to kind of recap some of the important points, let me get my big head off of these slides. Some of the important points that we covered last week that uh, are still really important, and we want to cover them again today, is keep it simple. Um, the, you know, the easier it is for you to do your lessons online, the more chance we have for a successful lesson. Um, and so there are a few ways we can do that. Um, obviously, I think experience is really important uh, when it comes to you know, figuring out how to keep it simple. But some things we've come up with are uh, just make sure your, um, your resources are all really organized. Uh, if you just have one file with a list of everything you're gonna do, man, it makes it really, really easy. So for example, uh, for all of our lessons, this is what my, uh, my folder looked like before my lesson. So you can see here that I got my, uh, my title screen. Um, I'll explain each of these in more detail, but I've got my first activity. It's the, basically the warm up, the title screen. Uh, and then I've got here, you can see, um, I'm gonna do a, an, a weather activity. I'm going to take uh, attendance and maybe we'll ask what day is it and you know, some, some kind of warm up questions. Maybe I'll throw in a, a song, a little song to uh, just kind of change the pace, uh, mix it up a little bit, give me a breather because with online lessons, we're kind of constantly talking and talking, talking. So it's okay to throw in uh, maybe a two or three minute uh, activity or just song where we don't have to say anything. Just let the kids sit back and hopefully sing. Um, great. So then uh, my next thing I would have here is maybe uh, another, you know, game or activity. Then maybe I would start reviewing some of my materials uh, and then talk about the new content, have a, a chant video for that. Um, but yeah, it's just one file and it's, li it's listed. It's, maybe it's hard to see here, but it's uh, zero, zero, zero one zero two so i have these in order i just click them and i go um okay. actually though uh actually just a second here i'm gonna uh sorry i want to keep my my ear uh kind of free from noises here so i apologize for that um so yeah i'll explain this we'll have questions uh at the end here so just bear with me for a moment but uh, I've got my, you know, number zero, number one, number two. And so this is a really easy uh, format for me to, I guess, uh, follow when I do my lessons. So when I talk about keeping it simple, I mean the activities, but also the organization. The better our organization, uh, I think the more success we'll have in our lessons. So uh, going back to this guy here, we're going to keep it simple, kind of get that full screen. Um, I like to minimize the number of resources I use. So check this out, all I have in this folder, the only thing I'm going to do uh, uses PDFs and videos, that's it. So maybe they're uh, MP4s or you, know, you could have YouTube videos queued up, but just the fewer resources we have, the better. So I've got two, just PDFs and um, videos. And the cool thing about PDFs is if you look at my PDF viewer, uh, we are actually in a PDF viewer, I'll uh, step out of the full screen here. So you can see at the top of my screen, I have every single PDF is now open. So you can see here would be my, uh, my slides, my activity one, my activity two, my activity three, four, five. So everything I'm gonna do, I can just flip through my tabs in the PDF 
and wow, it's easy. So again, this is what I'm talking about when I, when I say keep it simple and keep it organized. Uh, if I were, you know, trying to do, if I were trying to use like, you know, JPEGs, a slideshow, a PowerPoint, the more programs, the more apps you include, just the more, the more opportunities chaos uh, there are for chaos. So yeah, um, right, keep it simple. Uh, and then last, I mentioned this last week, but the more, the more I've been using it, the more I realize this is a lifesaver. So we always wanna have uh, a student eye cam. So if you look at my desktop here, my desk with my, my computers, uh, here you can see my main screen. This has my, uh, my PDF screen, I've got my Zoom window here, I've got some files open, but I don't really know what the students can see. So what I do is I join my lesson, uh, I join my lesson actually with my you know, cell phone or tablet and just have the exact same view and the exact same audio that my students have. And that way, just as I look at the camera, I can glance at the monitor and say, oh, I'm supposed to be showing them a PDF, they're seeing me. So this has been uh, just the, probably the, the most uh, you know, important part of our, our whole setup. It's just making sure you can always hear and always see what the students uh, are hearing and seeing. So then, um, now a little bit about the uh, philosophy of, of where we've taken our online lessons in just three weeks. So I kind of asked myself, um, are we, this should say te teaching or TV. Let me, let me change that up here. Are, are we teaching or are we making uh, a TV show? So that's one way I like to think about it. <clears throat> and so if you try to do the, uh, the exercises, the activities, the drills that you're used to doing in a live face-to-face -face classroom, I found a lot of these fail in the online setting. So what I've decided to do is stop teaching lessons where I try to interact one-on-one -on -one and I try to create this program, this nicely uh, you know, polished, um, high quality video so that once I finish the lesson, I have a good recording. Then once I have the recording, um, let me move out of the way here, um, I can get students to watch that lesson and review it. And so what I've been doing is actually, we put this um, on the website and all of the students can log in, there's a password protected site, and they can see the lessons. Uh, for this week's lesson and this week's homework uh, tutorial or worksheet tutorial. Then I show them last week's lesson. Maybe they want to review it and just watch it again and again. Uh, and last week's uh, worksheet tutorial. And, uh, you know, the way Aaron put it is when kids watch cartoons and Disney movies, they watch them over and over and over. And just that, that repetition uh, allows for a, a great opportunity to get that, uh, you know, that natural kind of uh, absorption or immersion, whatever you want to call it. I don't know that our students are gonna watch our lessons again and again and again, but if we can convince the parents that, hey, there's a lot of value to these lessons, then um, you know, watch them over and over and over. So we have to create, um, obviously we have to create the best lessons we can. And so uh, what does that mean? Well, uh, so I say the show must go on. And I've, I've changed my teaching style a lot uh, based, on, <clears throat> based on this idea. I'm not trying to teach my, my traditional lessons, but what I'm doing, this might seem a little bit um, counterintuitive or strange at first, but I mute everyone, pretty much all of my lesson. And for, there's a few reasons for that. One is that I was getting really poor audio. Um, we had some parents complain like, hey, I can hear dogs barking in the other kids' backgrounds. And you know, my, my kid can't really hear, it's not, it's not fair to us. And it's, it's a fair point. Um, and then the other thing is like, if I unmute everyone or one person and say, okay, uh, how is the weather today? And I just kind of wait, uh, okay, come on, come on, answer. We're all waiting here. You know that awkward silence? But when you're online, it's magnified by like a thousand times. So, and when I review that video, I don't want people to just sit and watch this kind of awkward moment of silence or students, you know, zoning out, eating, doing whatever they're doing. So, yeah, mute everyone and ignore everyone. It's a weird idea, but that's what I do. And, and so what I do is I'm kind of teaching now. Uh, I'm teaching to the invisible kids. So I just have this imaginary student uh, in my room uh, or this group of students and they're perfect. They repeat everything I say. They say the letters when they write. They do exactly everything I want them to do. 
And so this um, was a little bit hard to figure out at first, but you really have to imagine yourself in the student's shoes, how they're watching the video. Um, another thing is it's really awkward teaching to just an empty room where you can't hear anyone. But you, it takes a lot of, you know, the power of imagination and just kind of, you know, throw in those cues. Uh, give yourself a lot of space, a lot of time. Say, okay, guys, how is the weather? Oh, yeah, it's sunny. Please repeat after me. It's sunny. And that's the kind of awkward silence. But when you think about the students sitting down and watching it, participating or watching it later, then they can have that space where maybe the first time they didn't say it, but they get in the habit uh, or they, they start doing that. Uh, and then this is also kind of a, uh, another weird thing, but let's try to give some, I can highlight it here, some positive reinforcement. And um, this is great. Uh, there's nobody in the room, but I say, okay, everyone repeat after me, C-A-T. All right, good job. You guys said that in a great voice. That's good. Okay, try to say it in a bigger voice next time. But, you know, I'm trying to just, I, they're probably saying things. They're probably repeating on the other end. I just can't hear. But I have to pretend that they're doing that. Okay, so, um, yeah, these are the lessons that uh, we've been, uh, or this is the idea, the, uh, the approach that we've come up with. So we're really trying to teach to create this, this kind of TV show, or this TV program. Um, you know, just ignore everyone, teach this in, uh, invisible group of kids. And um, yeah, so I'll show you basically um, a water, not a watered down, a very quick version of what we do uh, for our online lessons. And I've, I've put this on uh, our website. You can go here to bingobongokids.com, sample lesson, and you can watch the full 45 minute lesson that I'm recapping. I'm, I'm about to recap right now with Aaron. So, uh, Aaron, you, uh, can you be my student today? Yes. Great, thank you. Yes, happily. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, um, I've got, uh, my PDFs are already queued up, ready to go. Uh, they're supposed to be in the starting screen here. And uh, yeah, so here's, here's how I start my class. I have my welcome screen, just uh, full screen. My mic is muted, I'm getting ready. The kids jump into the classroom and they can see Oh, look, the, uh, today's Zoom class is going to start, and um, the class time, oops, that's a mistake. <laughs> it should say uh, the time. <clears throat> I'll fix that. And then it has the, the day and the date. So, all right, so here we go. Then I, I zoom in here, or I pan in. Uh, maybe you can see me. All right, guys, let's start English class. Hello. Hello. All right, normally I wouldn't have a student to, to give me any feedback. So I would just be like, okay, hello. Great. Are you guys ready? Let's start English class. Let's start English class. So this is, this is, yeah. Imagine Aaron's not here, but he's here just to, to illustrate um, the idea. <clears throat> okay, guys. So uh, here's our first activity. And sometimes my head's in the way. Sometimes it's not. Let's figure out what day it is. So maybe I'll have this, I'll use this as an opportunity to practice. Um, repeating days of the week. Okay, everyone. So let's say the days of the week together. Ready? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Perfect. Thanks, Aaron. <clears throat> and um, this just illustrates exactly why I don't want to hear the students. It's because the delay and the lag with a lot of these different, um, it doesn't matter what software you, you're using. It depends on the internet connection, um, your computer, your device. So you always have lag. So if I make sure that everyone's muted, then they'll be able to hear me at their, their lag rate or whatever time they're actually hearing it and repeat along. And then also if they're listening later, they won't hear this you know, delay of student uh, teacher. So anyway, we would practice the days of the week and then I would say, okay guys, uh, well, is it Saturday? Uh, Aaron, is it Saturday today? today? Uh, Saturday today? Uh, no, no, it isn't. All right, let's check. He said no. It. He said no, it isn't. Let's click. Boom! No, it isn't. So we get this big red X on here. So these are our um, our interactive PDFs. That's all these are. It's just really simple PDF files. We added a little bit of code to make them, um, you know, fun and interactive. But all right, uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Aaron, is it Thursday? Is today Thursday? Yes, it is. All right, I'm gonna click the button and let's see what happens. Actually, I like to have the kids use their little whiteboards and say, all right, if you think it is, draw a circle. If you think it isn't, draw an X. So we try to get that, that interactivity there. 
and maybe I'll spotlight the students, show them on the camera, but I won't listen to their audio. Uh, and so Aaron said, yes, it is. Good job, excellent. All right. All right, so let's move on. So what's the date? Uh, today is April 30th, uh, 2020. Repeat after me, today is da -da 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 -da. Okay, so we practiced the date, we practiced the day. Oh, guys, let's check the weather. All right, so let's first say all of the, um, the, the kinds of weather. So everyone, please, Aaron, you don't have to repeat. Everyone, please repeat okay. after me. It's sunny. Oh, good job. Okay, next, it's cloudy. And so what I'm doing is I'm opening up that silence for anyone during the lesson to repeat uninterrupted, or if they're watching later, they can use this for review. Okay, um, so we practice all the weather, uh, the types of weather. All right, so uh, let me ask, Aaron, is it sunny today? Or was it sunny today? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Boom, yes, it is. All right, is it cloudy today? Ah, uh, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. All right, so boom, there we go. And uh, is it rainy today? No, it isn't. All right, so anyway, um, you, can, you can use whatever vocabulary you wanna practice with these. I like to have my kids always practice, yes, it is, no, it isn't, as our first warm-up activity. Then we, uh, we jump into maybe doing, um, so you cannot see my screen, that's why I've got my, my student eye camera here. All right, so next we would do roll call, and I would say, okay, uh, Aaron. Yes, hello, I'm here. Okay, he's here. What's your nickname, Aaron? Uh, my nickname is AJ. All right, and then here it says, how old are you? But I'm gonna, I like to change these on the fly. Um, Aaron, how are you today? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. All right, Aaron is fine. Everyone, please repeat. Aaron is fine. One, two, Aaron. Fine, good, so we throw that space in. Everyone has a chance to repeat. All right, so we go through all the students, maybe, um, by the way, you just click these. I don't know if you can see, but I can change the images just by clicking them. These are buttons. Um, I'll demonstrate that later if you need. Um, you can throw in some characters to say he's not here, she's not here, and then finally the teacher, what's your name? I'm Jeremy. Okay, so then, uh, guys, why don't we uh, do a, an educational activity? It's not a game, well, it is a game. Okay, and so what we've done is we've made all of these, um, these different varieties of easy uh, you know, PDF games for kids. And these are, are really simple. Um, you don't need an internet connection. And so last week, I think we did uh, Peekaboo, How Are You? And uh, Where Is It Today? Uh, Aaron, let's play Which Egg Will Hatch First? Okay, okay. so the first thing we're gonna do, and uh, let's see if I can get rid of my screen. Here we go. All right, guys, can you spell the colors? I didn't delete these initially, but uh, we could if we wanted. Start with these blank, because they're fun and interactive. All right, <clears throat> Aaron, how do you spell pink? Uh, P-I-N-K. Whoops, yes, that is correct. And yellow, repeat after me, yellow and O-R-A-N-G. Okay, well, guess what, Aaron? There's an alligator in one of these eggs, and we're gonna find out which one. So, I'm going full right. screen now. Here we go, let's watch. Oh, look at the eggs. Oh, they're growing. Oh, they're growing. Oh, 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 guys. Uh, I think they're gonna, they're gonna, oh, they wanna break out, they wanna break out. So, okay, now, you, do you have your whiteboards? If you have your whiteboard, please write number one, number two, or number three, um, depending on which one you think is gonna hatch first. Let's take a look here. So, <clears throat> if you think it's number one, number two, or number three. So I did this activity with my students today for the first time and they loved it, um, of course. So they can write one, two, and three on their whiteboards and they can get points. <clears throat> for this activity, um, what I like to do is actually, uh, I'll spotlight for a few minutes, or for a few seconds here. Aaron, do you have your whiteboard ready? Yes. All right, so depending on the age, if they're young, they can say one, two, three. If they're older, they can spell the words. And I'll say, all right, well, I can see some, um, I can see some different students' answers on my screen because I have the gallery over here. They can't see that for mine. I want to be the focus of the lesson the whole time. But occasionally, I was, oh, let's see what Aaron's answer is. Oh, Aaron says yellow. All right. And then let's ask uh, Eddieco and let's ask John so we can ask everyone their answers. But then eventually back to me. And okay, guys, are you ready? Which egg is it? Do you have your answers? Ah, uh, here we go. We're gonna get to my right screen. Oh, the alligator 
was in egg number two. Good job. So All then, right. oh, yeah. So which duck will hatch first? We can practice different colors. Red, we got black, white, silver, gold, rainbow. Anyway, these are just, um, they're just loaded with tons of different ways that we can obviously keep it simple, but practice a lot of different things while keeping the kids engaged in the screen and uh, focused on the teacher. Now, again, one of the drawbacks of my style that we're, we're, we're trying out here is that I don't get to ask every single student. I don't get to hear this one-on-one -on -one interaction. And I miss that. That's the most important part for me to evaluate each student. Where are they at um, in this conversation? Do they need more practice with this, you know, this dialogue or with this, this example sentence? But now I'm hoping that because they have the video to watch and review that they can go back and um, yeah, learn on their own or with the you know, help of their, their parents. All right, so that was a fun activity, guys. Well, next, um, I'm gonna show you, we have the next, um, you know, we have the next uh, activity lined up in our PDFs. So why don't we practice um, some of the words from our unit? Um, every unit, we have a curriculum card. Uh, it's usually about four lessons. We'll practice uh, some A words, B words, C words, maybe some numbers. We could practice some different emotions. And uh, the unit song is How's the Weather? Great. Um, <clears throat> So here, uh, there's a cool tool. Again, I'm using ManyCam for all of this, and I'm going to explain all of the steps I'm doing after I demonstrate the lesson. So it's, it's nice to see what we can do, and then we'll see how to do it. Um, so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna show you now the, the drawing tool. And uh, this is, I'm sure most software has this. It's, it's really convenient. But with, um, with ManyCam, we've got hotkeys. And so with hotkeys, I can basically just click a button on my uh, keyboard and I'm good to go. So I just hit uh, control shift D and all of a sudden I can draw on my screen and delete really quickly. So having the ability to do that lets me, uh, yeah, just run through my lessons a little bit uh, more smoothly or, um, you know, without stopping and starting to deal with software. So, all right, guys, repeat after me. A a alligator. Oh, you got to see me. You can't see me. I think it's important for the students to be able to see this kind of this gesture here, so ah, ah, alligator. Next, ah, ah, apples. Okay, ah, ah, ants. All right, so I would use this as you know, just a quick activity to maybe review the A letters that we did last week. Um, if this week we're gonna study the B words, then I can do uh, either you know, practice those or jump to a new activity. But just having a lot of different things um, to, to cycle through quickly and not, you know, I've had activities that just bomb and flop. And the kids, you can tell they're just off in another land. Like, okay, we got to just move through next activity. So, um, yeah, in that case, what I would do is maybe say, uh, let's go ahead and, you know, let's throw in another song here. So I'm going to practice the B words just by using uh, a chant video or one of these chants. Um, actually, I think I have C ready to go. So let me throw this up. And uh, there it is. It's already ready to go. And... All right, so you guys are not hearing my audio. Just a moment. I have not set this up right. Yeah. Clock. K -k clock. Okay, so anyway, um, yeah, we can throw in videos uh, just to mix that up. I would probably uh, use that as a nice little breather so that I can take a break after doing all these warm up activities and uh, you know the hatching uh, hatching eggs game. And then let them just practice the C words on their own. And then next I would say, okay guys, well, let's go ahead and spell each of those words. So let me get my uh, flashcards here. So let's practice the words that start with the letter C. And here's the cool thing. I now have just these blank flashcards that I can go in and type. Do you want to type C-L-O-C-K lowercase? Do you want to type in it's a clock? It's a clock. Um, or maybe for the younger kids, I like to teach uppercase first, C-L-O-C-K. It's up to you because these, you know, you can just pre, uh, you know, fill them in and save them or you can do them on the fly. But having that ability to just change things um, in front of the students, and I, I don't have any flashcards. I'm not trying to hold up little paper flashcards to the screen. So by having these interactive, uh, simple resources, we've got a lot of power to create these fun lessons. 
So I would run through each of these and maybe spell them out. All right, guys, please repeat after me. C, actually, I would do it this way. C, L, uh, whoa, O, C, K. And then we could practice the cow. And then we could do car and cat and all of those, right? Okay, guys, well, I think it's time to do some worksheets. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at our worksheets now. And we demonstrated this last week, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but we have <clears throat> all of our videos, all of our worksheets are now pre-recorded so that I can just talk along. I can speak along and say, oh, it's a crab. And look, Ari's going to um, you know, show us how to do these. Uh, you cannot see that now. Can you see now? Yeah. So I'm just sitting here kind of explaining as uh, he's going through and saying, okay, let's write. Uh, let's write the words here, C-L-O-C-K. And uh, I can stop the video and let them write, but I like to get through this a little bit faster and say, well, if it's too fast, now just go home, or not go home, uh, just after the lesson, watch the video. It's now on the, on the student profile page where you can go and watch the uh, worksheet tutorials. This video is available. Then when they watch it, they can listen to the audio. Yes, you can stop the video and take your time. Okay, next. Let's see. Oh, crab has one, two. So what this is doing is now it's giving students two chances to hear how to complete their worksheets, which is more input and just that basically doubles their, uh, their English experience or the, you know, the amount of minutes they're getting uh, that input there. So this, I think, is a, is a really effective way to set up the lessons for online lessons for now. Um, I haven't checked to see exactly what number of students are reviewing the videos, how many times. We haven't taken uh, any questionnaires. We haven't asked the parents, is it too fast, too slow, what do you think? I think right now we're just trying to iron out uh, our system and you know, polish it. And then after that, I think we'll have a little more room for feedback and improvement. So yeah, uh, that would be the, the rough idea of my lessons. And then finally, uh, at the end of class, we'd go to the last page and say, all right guys, well, that was a fun lesson. Um, thank you very much. Your homework for today is page 11 and 12. Uh, all right, everyone, let's finish English class. Thank you, goodbye, see you. So that is how I um, structure my lessons. Okay, so that's kind of a, a, lot of, a lot of information blasted at you really quickly, I think. Um, why don't we take a five minute break? When we come back, um, I'm going to walk through the, uh, I guess the essential features of ManyCam, setting up your different channels, um, the hotkeys, and then the drawing features. And that way we can see why it's a lot, I, for me it's preferable to Zoom because Zoom I have to click, click. I haven't figured out how to get the shortcut or the hotkeys set up uh, as conveniently as uh, ManyCam. I'm sure there are different programs that allow that, but um, hopefully you guys are here to see some ManyCam demonstrations. So uh, why don't I put five minutes on the clock here and uh, I can do that with ManyCam. And uh, turn the clock on. Uh, last time I think we had it set to like five days. So maybe today we'll aim for five minutes. <clears throat> that looks like that should be a five there. That should be a zero. All right, guys, I will see you in five minutes. All right, and we are back. So uh, for the second half, uh, let's jump in and look at um, yeah, ManyCam. Let's look at the, uh, the fine details, give a little tutorial, uh, kind of explain why I like the, um, the software so much. Uh, okay, so just uh, let me find my PDFs here and we will go with ManyCam here. All right, um, get rid of this timer. So the, the reason I chose ManyCam is uh, I was doing all of my lessons on Zoom and I realized that whenever I would do a screen share, Zoom was taking the data from my screen and the data from my webcam, and it was basically causing more lag and more problems. So I thought, what if I just had a way to uh, you know, change what my web webcam is showing? And it turns out they have these virtual cameras, virtual desktops. So I guess the easiest way to think about it is you just have a, you know, the TV is your webcam and all the different channels, you just click to change the channel and it's just one screen 
uh, but you control what's being displayed on the screen. And that's the uh, idea behind ManyCam. So with ManyCam, um, I, I took some screenshots here just to, to illustrate what's going on. It's a little bit easier to understand. Uh, so this is the ManyCam interface. And you can see that over here, I've got all of my options for the video, for the audio. Um, I guess maybe if I were drawing these, it might be easier to see here. Use my big fat marker here. Um, these are my main options. If I wanted to do some effects uh, or layers or you know change my background, I actually don't use it for any of that. There's only one thing I'm after, and that's having the ability to control what people are seeing through my camera. Okay, and so that magic uh, kind of all happens down here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you see these guys. These are my channels. Uh, I think they're called um, presets or whatever, but I'm going to call them channels just for simplicity's sake. And um, so you can see there's just tons of channels. I think on mine, I have like hundreds, if not, you know, just so many. And you can do all kinds of uh, interesting things. But for now, what I like to do is just keep it simple. And I have uh, generally about five channels set up. So on one channel, this would just be my straight webcam. All right, so whenever, whenever I want somebody to see my webcam, to see my, my face, uh, I come over here and uh, let's see here, this guy here. That's just my webcam. So I'll, I'll click on this button right here and hi, you can see that camera, you can see that channel. Uh, but maybe now I want to show you uh, a different channel. I wanna show you just my PDF channel. Um, so whatever PDF screens I wanna show you, then I would uh, go over here and show you this guy. That's my second channel. And if I do that, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, you're actually looking at it right now because it's in a PDF mode. Um, but <laughs> let's go ahead and look at, say, this third one. Now, my third channel, sometimes I want to have my face kind of uh, inside of that picture. Uh, I read that I think the more students can see the teacher's face in an online lesson, I think the more successful those lessons are going to be. Uh, if we, they couldn't see our face, it wouldn't really be much different than watching YouTube or you know, just finding uh, you know, some other teacher. But our students are, are converting from live lessons to online just because they want to hopefully see us. So if I go to channel three, now you can see my PDF screen with um, the window of me on top of that. So that was just using uh, this guy number here, number three. And uh, so actually what I can do is I can drag, I can drag the, uh, the screen around. So here you can see, um, I can move myself around. I can make this picture bigger. I can make this picture smaller. In fact, I can actually go in and do like a split screen. Uh, I could do four different screens if I wanted to, but again, let's keep it simple. Let's not get carried away. Because the more channels you have to remember what you have on them, the, the easier it is to forget and get lost in your, your web of, of channels here. So then uh, if I go back to my, just my regular PDFs here, uh, now I'll look at channel four uh, and channel five. These are my video channels. If I'm ever gonna show a video, I have those kind of already prepared and set up. Um, so I could either show a video without my face and they just go to the video and click start. Two, three, four, left. Or I can then throw myself into that and have a little um, fade in. So, and changing the channels is really, really simple. So I'm gonna do something that um, is gonna be kind of confusing, but I'm going to actually share my desktop with you. And when I do that, it's gonna be this weird vortex of kind of craziness, but uh, let me show you my desktop one. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna probably see, whop, uh, what channel am I on? Channel six, see, I'm already lost. And um, see here, you can see my desktop. It's not doing the thing it's supposed to be doing, but um, okay. So maybe you can see, let me pull my uh, mini cam. Ah, so many windows. Okay, let me get my, win, my PDF. I think my machine's having some issues here. All right, just a minute. I'm gonna close mini cam down and uh, reboot this so that it can work as it's supposed to. Mini cam. All right, I'm back. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. All right. So uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure why it's not sharing my uh, my primary screen here. It looks like it is, but it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, so I guess 
I'll just kind of explain it using my PDFs then. And we'll go back to these PDFs and go into full screen. So for these guys, all I have to do is click. Once I click on the uh, each channel, it gives me an, uh, I can choose. There's a, I can select between um, whether I want my camera. So, you know, I'll go over here. So when I click on this guy here, just click on that. And it gives me uh, a pop-up and it shows all of my different cameras, all of my different apps. It says, do you want to put it in your PDF? Do you want to share your desktop? Um, so it's really easy to set up how, you know, set your, your main channel and then your, your picture in picture. So setting those up is really easy. Um, so I guess, yeah, there's not much more to say about that. It's easier just to get the software. I think the free version allows you to have two channels and that's enough to practice to see if you like that style of uh, teaching. And then after that, there are tons of tutorials and uh, ManyCam's website is, is full of uh, good information about troubleshooting and, and how to use their, their software. So that's uh, what I want to say about those guys. And then next, so drawing in uh, ManyCam. Uh, if I can't, for some reason, I cannot show you my screen at the moment. Let me try this one more time. Primary display one. And it's it's not behaving. So, uh, let me ask Aaron. So what can you see here? We can see a video of uh, the ABC chat with your profile in the background. Yeah, but it's not showing my that infinite vortex it's supposed to be showing. So this, uh, it, huh, very interesting. Not much we can do about this now. Show all displays. Hmm. All right, I think, yeah, this would just require uh, a restart uh, to fix. So I can't demonstrate that, but I will just say that with the drawing feature, um, yeah, I just hit um, my, my short, my hotkeys and I can change uh, and draw these guys here. Uh, I can draw shapes. So if I wanted to just draw like circles um, to illustrate points uh, and show those, I can. Um, yeah, so the drawing feature is really nice. And then the reason I like these is because I have the hotkeys. Uh, and the hotkeys basically just let me set up my keyboard any way that I want. So that if I hit Control, um, you know, or Alt-1, then I'm in this screen. If I hit Alt-2, I go to my PDFs. If I'm in Alt-3, I go to PDF with picture in picture. So setting up the hotkeys uh, really allows you to just uh, not worry about the software and clicking things. Um, and yeah, you can set up the hotkeys for drawing as well. So I have my Control Shift. D would be my drawing tool. I can draw pictures. You can, um, you know, there's tons of stuff that I haven't even played around with. Uh, you can go in and do like stamps and uh, lots of silly stuff. Um, but again, that's not really what I'm using this software for. I think for me, I, I want to focus on the content of my, of my curriculum, uh, of my lessons, and just use the, the camera panning and switching to allow me to easily switch between activities switch up videos and uh, have a smooth lesson that I can just record and show the students later. So that's kind of, uh, yeah, what I wanted to talk about today. Um, so <clears throat> I guess there's probably, I went through a lot of this so quickly. So I think we're gonna maybe open it up to some questions now and uh, see if, if uh, hopefully I haven't confused everyone or turned you off to the idea of using Medicam in your lessons. Hey, uh, Aaron. Yes. Hello. Okay. Any questions so, up until? So far, yeah. Yes, we have one question from um, Erico, and she wanted to know: um, Will the digital items we saw in the presentation be available to use? All right. Good. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of working frantically right now to because uh, we're making this stuff, we're developing it for our own lessons, but realizing like this stuff is really, really. Um, you know, awesome. And it's, it's helping us out a lot. So let's see if I can find uh, my channel here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm going to show you the website and I'll show you. Yeah, my, uh, my mini cam is angry at me right now. Let me try to uh, close. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to sign off for just a second. Aaron, if you want to tell a joke, <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, so unfortunately, I don't have any uh, jokes to hand at the moment. 
Um, but if you, if you want to ask any questions, I can put them into the uh, document right now and, uh, and we, can, we can ask those, okay? All right. Okay, I'm, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. All right. Hmm, that's, uh, let's see here. I, uh, I'm not sure what to say about this. Yeah, my, my screen share is not working. Let me, I'm going to actually close down some of these channels. I think maybe uh, one of these channels is just is making the many cam gods angry. If I can, let's go back to preset two here. And let's see if I can get my... There we go. Okay, yeah, it was just one of the channels had a, a glitch or a bug. So, um, but yeah, our website, we're going to have everything on here as fast as I can, as soon as we can get it up. Um, right now, you can't really see any of it because there's no uh, navigation or links, but there's going to be a section called, uh, I think, Digital Interactive, um, and that's going to have all of our, um, all of our kids' games, uh, all of these, you know, these warm-up activities, the weather things. So yeah, definitely, we will have that. And the, if you just look at our blog, that's probably the fastest way to find out information. So if you uh, go to the blog, uh, ESL lesson plan ideas, or probably even teacher resources, I'm pulling that up right now. Uh, and you can see our most recent, let me uh, use my drawing tool here. Our most recent one is uh, PDF flashcards and games. And if you click on this, Right now, there's a kind of a description of a lot of these different things we've been using. Um, our phonics flashcards, um, our editable flashcards. Uh, we have, last week we uh, showed you guys the uh, spot the difference. This is fun and interactive. You can get points, have a timer, our warm up questions. Yeah, so everything that we make, once they're available on the site, uh, it's all gonna be ready here. And I've, I've got, I think about half of it up right now. I think by tomorrow, I can have the other half up. And so we're just trying to ask, you know, maybe like one or 200 yen um, for each PDF resource. But because there's so many different things we're going to be releasing every month, we had the idea of doing uh, like a monthly resource club. So uh, if you, uh, you know, pay, I think about 1,500 yen a month, basically you have access to everything and just download whatever you need. But just keep in mind, every month there are going to be um, new variations of old uh, products. So new, uh, you know, spot the difference games. Uh, the hatching eggs will have different animals hatching um, and we're going to keep finding new ideas and you know the more input we get from um, you know our customers as well that's going to help us develop more and more so yeah it's it's going to be there um, I think I said last week we're hoping to have it you know by the beginning of this week and we just have so much to do I think everyone knows the feeling of being swamped at the moment with online lessons but yeah um, hopefully by tomorrow if not uh, Tuesday at the latest we'll have something concrete on our website with a link so yeah, sorry, there's a long answer for that question, but um, good. Uh, next. All right, so next. Okay, uh, John was asking, what software do we use to record our videos? Um, good question, John, thanks. Um, I'm just, uh, da, 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 uh, let me spotlight myself here. Um, I'm just using Zoom. Um, I go in and Zoom's got the built-in record feature. Um, it records um, once the lesson starts and I record to my machine. Um, I don't know anything about their cloud system or how much space I have. I record to, um, yeah, my machine. And then I actually use a video editing program and I chop off the beginning where it's kind of messy or you know, there's 10 minutes of students coming into the, the lesson. And um, I also, um, I convert it down to like, I think not even 720, like um, SD is the format. I try to get them as um, light or small of files as possible because we're hosting those on our own website. But I know Zoom uh, allows you to host them or um, if you had the patience, you could throw them each on YouTube um, and share them that way with just an unlisted link. <clears throat> so yeah, that is the answer to that question. Alrighty. And sorry, let me- Okay, uh, so next. Sorry, Aaron, can I interrupt oh, okay. for a second? I think I've got my screen uh, in screen back. So let me show you what I was trying to show you initially uh, with these guys here. So now maybe if you look at my screen three, da, 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 you can see my desktop. And when I put ManyCam in there, it gets this, that's what we're after. So you can see this big weird vortex of all my screens. Oh no. Okay, but what I can show you is down here, uh, da, 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 maybe where I'm, now I'm confusing myself. Ah, so down here, are my channels. 
All right, so to do the picture in picture, I think that's one of the next questions, but also what I wanted to demonstrate anyway, is you click the button. If there's a plus, you can left click it. And then it gives you a selection. Do I want to put a camera? So I have two different cameras and then some other software going to my, um, my feed here. Uh, I don't know anything about games or IP cameras, but those are there. The thing we're after is the desktop. So I can show you my full display like this, but I probably don't want to show you that because it's just weird and, and crazy. But I can show you specific windows. I can just focus on um, Firefox, or I can just show you the PDFs, or I can just show you a video. Now, let's say I want to show you uh, the PDF. So I set that in there. And now I want to put the picture in picture. So the easiest way to do that is actually to right click again. And this is add new layer. And then you have below that manage layers. But yeah, if I add a new layer, all of a sudden there's this new black, um, just kind of static box here. So I can right click that guy and then tell it to put my camera in. And then I now have my picture in picture with PDFs. Uh, but I could have then, you know, say, oh, well, actually, no, I didn't want PDFs. Right click the, the back layer and change that. Uh, I want to show you guys my, um, my video. So then I go to uh, the video. Now we have Ari the Alligator ready to show you the uh, homework tutorials. Now you can get even a little more fancy if you want. Again, I don't like to, but if you want to try it out, go for it. Um, so you can see, can you see my screen? I think you can. Mm. Now I'm confused. There it is. OK. It gets confusing here. So over here, you've got your presets. These are your channels. And uh, for each of the channels, now I can click on it. And uh, if you click on it, it'll change to it. So I actually don't want to click on the channel itself, but I want to click on some of these things over here. So I've got um, this little pencil, and that will allow me to change to a picture in picture mode. So I could do uh, one picture in the screen, a uh, one picture in picture. I could have two pictures in pictures. I could have uh, a split screen vertical, split screen horizontal, or you know, four. Let's just go crazy here. And um, yeah, so now I've got four different channels that I can set up here. So I'm going to put my PDFs in this one, um, my uh, PDFs in that one. Uh, I'll put my um, web browser in this one. And I'll put my, uh, who, you know, who knows, whatever I wanted to show. I would never try to do this in a lesson. But hey, check it out. Oh, I forgot to put myself in one of those. So um, yeah, let me set myself in one of those. So now I've got this crazy, um, you know, four screen, split screen, but that's way too much for uh, what I want to do. And again, it's just going to make my brain explode. So um, I would go back to <laughs> this vortex here, uh, click that guy. And instead of doing the, one, uh, the four split, I can go back to my picture in picture or just my regular mode, save that. And now ah, I didn't do it correctly, apparently, but click it, save it, and then I'm back to one. So um, yeah, there's a lot of little, um, I mean, this, this software is just loaded. I didn't even show you the, the silly stuff like you can do in classes. Um, I can, uh, let's see here, I've got effects. Um, I can put like, I like the animals. If you, you wanna get silly, you can put um, tons of, of dinosaurs. <laughs> I was doing this actually with the, the mom and babies because this was actually fun. Uh, I can just add tons of dinosaurs here and it just gets weird. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. Yay, dinosaur galore. Um, but yeah, it, it actually is something that I could use to say, okay guys, uh, let's count the fish. All right, ready? One. Okay, wow, two. Wow, three fish and have this little, you know, fun, interactive, uh, you know, underwater sea life uh, lesson with my kids. I don't actually do this very much because this isn't what uh, Bingo Bongo's curriculum is designed around. But, you know, I throw it in once in a while uh, when I when I just want to mix it up. Um, I can throw, they've got lots of like um, masks and hats. Uh, I've been throwing the cat on my head. I, I forgot where that is, but face accessories. Yeah, this one is actually my favorite. You can get a cat. Does this work right? Hey guys, how's it going? Got my cat. So anyway, just wasting time here. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, fun things you can do. So uh, Aaron, back to you. Any questions?
Okay, yes, we do have one. The next one is from Lawrence. He said, what kind of camera are we using? Ah, okay, so um, I have two cameras and let's see. Um, <clears throat> Aaron, can you switch me? Can you spotlight my uh, J3 preview cam? Yes, one second. Uh, is it in there somewhere? It should be. Uh, it's it's not a it's not a host, so I can't. All uh, right. Uh, let me make that guy a co-host. All right, we're in there, uh, and he's not. Is he muted or what's going on here? What about now? Is that possible? And uh, no, I'm afraid not. Uh, it's probably because I don't have start your video. Start my video. Do I have my video on? Thanks, Lawrence. And uh, I think I have to join audio for that to. Um, be the case. So what about now? Can we spotlight me? Thank you. Boom. Uh, all right. So, uh, uh, oops, I did not want to unmute that. Okay. So, um, Lawrence, you uh, opened a can of worms. This is my station. Uh, my station is absolutely insane because I am a, definitely a computer geek, if you will. So what happened is we have three, uh, three teachers, three classes happening simultaneously. And I had to uh, just scramble to find as many webcams as possible. We had two nice ones. And then I realized, like, hey, why don't I just take my uh, really nice uh, Canon 5D Mark II and see what it does. And that's why I'm getting this really nice bokeh effect and uh, this blurred background. My backup is this little, um, it's called an ELP. It's a manual focus, no mic. Uh, they still have them on Amazon. They're about 9,000 yen. Uh, they work really well in low light. Um, I highly recommend them. I bought two. Um, and then I've got, uh, you know, I've got my backup cameras and I'm um, using my phone as my student view cam there, my student eye view, so. Um, but yeah, I don't wanna get too much <laughs> into the technical side of things just because, yeah, um, that's not, <laughs> I don't think anybody can really, um, go about it the way that I've been able to. I've been fortunate to have some, um, you know, video experience and like wedding photography, and that allowed me to keep, you know, buying software or, you know, hardware, uh, geeking out like I do. All right. Okay, so next, uh, we have a question from Doris. Uh, well, it's, it's an issue actually. Yeah. She's experiencing some problems uh, on an iPad Pro uh, with this presentation being a bit blurry. Uh, have we heard of any kind of uh, fixes that might be, we might be able to use to help with this kind of thing? Blurry. I mean, on my end, I'm seeing the video is fine. Okay, so what uh, I think on, a, is, on my preview here. Yeah, we, I think we have HD turned off with our, our Zoom. I'm pretty sure we do. So we're, we're trying to send the lowest bandwidth, the lowest, um, you know, smallest, you know, size data packs um, to you guys. Um, on my, you know, my phone preview cam and on my tablet, they look fine. We're on a, a solid network. Um, I'm pretty sure we have a, a nice, um, you know, ethernet connection. Um, our Wi-Fi is, is pretty uh, reliable. And so I think one of the, the problems is if you try to use, you know, 4G, or if you try to use um, like an unstable Wi-Fi or just if you've got a lot of people, I've heard now that everyone's, you know, staying indoors and, you know, this time of, you know, in the evenings, the, the you know, the usage just goes up on, on internet usage, especially, I think Doris is in Tokyo. So what's, what's probably happening is you're just having, um, you know, a bandwidth issue with your, uh, either your internet or your Wi-Fi hot, uh, your, your spot or whatever. So I think there's not a lot you can do about that. Um, as soon as you can get to a better, faster, um, you know, more stable uh, network connection, I think the better the, the video will be. Um, but I, from you know what we've been seeing on our, our, our student preview cams, everything looks all right. And that's why um, they're really important to have those so you can see exactly what they're seeing. If I was looking at my, my phone and saying, oh, this is really, really bad resolution, I would say, oh, maybe I had many cams set to uh, like 360, now it's all really bad. Or maybe there was some setting going wrong on my end. Um, but yeah, so sorry, Doris, I can't help you. It's, um, it's probably out of your control unless you can find a, a way to get a different, you know, Wi-Fi hotspot or however you're using the, uh, the internet. But yeah, that's a tricky one, especially if we're trying to, you know, rely on some kind of reliable, reliable, um, internet to teach our lessons. If you have no internet, we're just 
out of a job, <laughs> more or less, or out of a lesson at least. Okay, so up next, um, from John, what kind of video editing software do we use to put our videos online? Um, so because uh, we develop our own software um, and we, you know, we do our own videos, we do a lot of, I've actually just invested in the Adobe Creative Cloud. I think it's 5,000 yen a month. And um, <clears throat> I think right now there might, I know there's an educator discount for one year, so you can get it for about half of that or 3,000 yen a month maybe. Um, so if you're doing anything, you know, if you can justify like maybe you've got two or three different, you know, programs you want to be using. Like I use, um, I use Premiere as my video editing, but I also use um, Illustrator and Photoshop just basically daily, like half of my day I'm on those those programs. I used Lightroom a lot for when I was doing um, wedding photography. And um, with Ari the Alligator, this is cool because there's a, there's a program called Character Animator. And that basically allows you, actually he's uh, in the background now, isn't he? Yes. So it just allows you to kind of bob you know, your head around and he follows <clears throat> along and uh, you get this cool animation yes. effect. Aha. Then we can find it because no other word has four. So yeah, I mean, I, I can't really recommend, you know, going out and, sp and spending a lot on a video editing machine and video editing software. I know that there's a lot of like free software or even cheaper software, you know, one-time purchase that probably it might be better for, you know, depending on how much you're going to use it. If you're not going to be making, um, you know, doing anything else other than these videos, it might not be worth it. Um, I know even once you upload to YouTube, there are some basic editing features. You can trim your video. Um, and they take care of all of the, um, you know, the sizing, you, they'll convert it to 1080, 720 and all the different formats. So again, I just, um, YouTube, this is a personal thing, but YouTube, they, they stopped their bulk uploader. And we used to upload 20, 30 videos at a time when we would do student profiles, um, or, you know, different, you know, of our, our bingo bongo chant videos. And because I've lost that feature, I've decided, well, you know what, we can actually host it ourselves. We're in a fortunate situation. So I've kind of been um, avoiding the, um, the YouTube route uh, when possible. But occasionally I'll, I'll throw things on there. So yeah, um, there are you know, a few different, whoa, a few different um, options. I, I probably am not the best person to uh, ask about the you know, alternatives to Adobe. All right, okay. And we have one last question. Uh, yeah. from Carl, a two-parter. Yeah. What do we do when wanting to see students while using Manicam? And could you please say the name of the low-light camera we use again, please? Uh, okay, so let me go to my somewhere. Where am I? I'm just lost in Windows here. <laughs> it's easy to do. All right, I've got my Q&A. And do I think because I, I turned off all of my windows on Manicam? Uh, let's see, do I have a PDF floating around here? I will make a PDF on this window here channel two is now going to be a pdf uh thanks for that um i'm gonna type some stuff in here too add a new window just a moment please throw in my camera and here we go okay so on channel two i'm back and i will shrink this guy down a little bit move me up here so the camera i'm using <clears throat> is um you can get it on uh, like i said amazon it's called an elp it's just ELP, and it's just a little two megapixel. But one thing you have to watch out for is make sure it says H264. Um, there are different versions and varieties of these. Um, also, you want to get the lens. Um, let me see off the top of my head. This is the uh, 2, 8 to 12, 2.8 uh, millimeter to uh, 12 millimeter, I believe, zoom lens on it. So uh, a couple of things about this. First, the, uh, the, the brand of camera, if you type in ELP, I think there's, that's the only thing out there. Uh, the two megapixels, it doesn't really matter the, the number of megapixels. There's actually an eight megapixel version, but it's not the uh, H264. Uh, it's not H264 and it looks terrible. So make sure you, you have this H264. This is the, um, I think the, the movie format or the, the codec or something that it just works really well in low light. Um, and then this 2.8 to 12, it's basically a, it's a really wide angle lens. Uh, and I'll, con I'm, I'll throw it, uh, let me throw this uh, screen, Minicam, where are you? Here we are, I've got it in my 
unusual place here. So I'll throw uh, to the USB camera. And let's see, can you see? So now you can probably see the camera. No, that's the wrong one. I'll change this one too. So here's my USB camera. So it, it's not the greatest um, you know, in low light, but it's, it's definitely not terrible. And it's got this zoom feature so I can zoom, whoop, I can focus, I can zoom in or zoom out a little bit. Um, there's different versions here, but uh, there's different like telephoto versions. Um, I really recommend the wide angle. Uh, and yeah, so that's something uh, I've been using. Uh, it's more of a backup camera um, or, you know, when I'm doing the Ari the alligator stuff, I use that. But yeah, uh, the other thing to watch out for is fluorescent light. This is kind of uh, standard, you know, for most webcams, but fluorescent lights will give you that, that uh, 50 hertz flicker or whatever. So uh, if you can get LED lights or incandescents, you'll be better off. Um, so then as far as, I think the, there was a second part of that, like spotlighting, right? Uh, yeah. So if we want to see a student while we're using uh, Manicam, what do we usually do? Okay. So this has been discussed, um, I think in a lot of different forums, but the zoom spotlight feature is, is just crucial to having any kind of success with your lessons. So sorry, this is just a really, really messy thing you're looking at here, but now what you're looking at is my Zoom window. And so, wow, that looks terrible. Let me just make that smaller. And uh, so I can see, uh, if I go over here, I can write on the screen a little bit. I can see some people, who can I see? I can see, uh, here's uh, Aaron's Q&A screen. Uh, I can see, hi, Eriko, hi, John. Uh, I can scroll through, I can see Lawrence and Eric. I see some, uh, a few different people here. And so what you need to be doing is making use of this spotlight. So when you click here, you've got spotlight. And what spotlight does is it locks the view. You wanna lock the view into the speaker. So that way it locks to my windows, it locks to my Minicam, and now whatever channel I show you, uh, it never changes. I don't like the, the speaker view <clears throat> um, in Zoom because if I'm you know, trying to teach and somebody says something, the camera just goes wild and, um, and it took me a while to figure out, but if you only have two people in a meeting, the spotlight feature is disabled. So when you have that student view camera, when you join your own lesson as a student, that automatically creates three people and gives you the ability to spotlight. So then if I wanted to say, hey, well, let's check Aaron's uh, video feed here, I can spotlight him. Um, maybe you can't, see, yeah, it's hard to see, but I'm spotlighting. Um, I see, uh, I can spotlight. <laughs> Eriko, she looks like she's using Manicam as well to ask me why. Uh, and so, yeah, you can spotlight people. But you've got to make sure to um, not forget and, you know, spotlight back to yourself. Because uh, if you don't do that and you're, like, running through Manicam, then uh, it's still stuck on one of your students. But, yeah, I, you know, at the beginning of the lesson, um, the end of the lesson, and then maybe in the middle for just, like, a couple of minutes, I'll spotlight one, you know, my students individually. And I think for them... I think if we're trying to create this TV show experience where they can see their teacher is the, you know, the, the host of the show and then like, oh, okay, well, let's, let's cut to our, our next, uh, oh, you know, our student over here and they can see themselves and in their mind, they're like, wow, I'm on TV. Uh, I'm not sure if kids, you know, can really differentiate YouTube screens versus TV screens, but I think it's, it's still powerful to, to have that, um, you know, make them a part of the conversation, part of the lesson but don't let the audio um, or you know, the delay in, 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 re in replying slow down your, your tempo. That's my advice. All right. Okay, and just one last thing there is, um, can we use software like a PowerPoint in Manicam? And I just wanted to show, yeah. uh, if we look here, yeah, you can use lots of different programs. Uh, you just load them up as a separate channel, so yeah. There's no yeah, problem there. Definitely, John. You can, there's everything and anything. There are so many features. It's just mind boggling. And I'm kind of scared to actually like dig in. Um, like I said, I don't even play with the, the accessories. I'm so like overwhelmed with the, the features. But when you click here, um, any window that you've opened. So if I had Photoshop opened, if I had Illustrator open, I can show you any of these programs. Um, I'll open Photoshop, I guess, uh, and maybe just one Excel real quick. It doesn't matter. That's the, the power and the, the kind of the beauty of these, um, these programs. So right now I, I'm sharing my screen so you can see that because it's shared with my screen. But let me uh, find my Minicam again. 
And now I can go in here and just set my desktop window. And so here is Excel is now visible. Uh, I've got Photoshop. So hey guys, let's check out my new Photoshop um, creation. Oh, there's nothing there, but uh, you get the idea, right? So it doesn't matter anything. Um, I will just say that we, on Windows 10, I had some problems with video. Uh, I had VLC and like the standard Windows Media Player weren't working. They weren't showing video. And I just downloaded uh, a program. Uh, it just basically, I didn't have the right codecs, whatever that means. But <clears throat> if, you're, uh, if you know more about video than I do, you have to have, there's tons of different video formats. And whatever, um, whatever Medicam likes, we just didn't have that. So what's, uh, Aaron, can you quickly figure out what this guy is called, this video player? It's like three, two, one, or it's like FP Minicam, or what is it called now? Uh, just a moment, please. Open with, uh, okay, it's called MP. Aaron, can you write this out? Or yeah, sure. MPH hyphen HC. <laughs> MPH hyphen. Okay, let me just display that on here. You got it? You beat me to it. MPH hyphen HC. Yeah. Uh, MPH FC. Uh, movie player something something. Anyway, I think that's the guy, and that's the one that solved my uh, problems. You might, uh, sorry, it's MPC, sorry, it's MPC hyphen HC. My bad. Okay. <clears throat> so MPC hyphen, uh, geez, I already forgot. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you, if you can't find it, let me know. I'll, I'll help you out with the, the video. It might be working for you now, depending on which um, you know, video players you have installed. But if not, that was one issue we ran into. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so Spotlight's a really powerful tool. And I, I, I highly recommend it for every lesson. Um, whether or not you, you know, use Medicam. Okay, we just had two more questions. Uh, the next one is from John again. What are the costs of Medicam? Good question. Uh, let's just go here and uh, on my Medicam, let me find, I moved my Medicam window again to show you guys that. Let's see, do I have a, we'll go over here. So if you go to Medicam, I do not, uh, <clears throat> I have no affiliation with this company, um, but I, it was pretty reasonable. They basically had, um, because we have, they have uh, this plan here with three, uh, three devices, and uh, we have three teachers, three machines, and three lessons you know, happening simultaneously. This is kind of the one for me. Um, so you can see you've got 24 video sources. What I I think that means is if I had 24 different cameras, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, sorry, that might be channels. What I'm calling channels, these might be your video sources. And like I said, I'm only using five for my standard lesson approach. Um, so even with the, the basic one, I could whittle that down to uh, four. It wouldn't be that difficult. So yeah, um, you know, if it's just a one man show, 29 bucks a year for you know everything that it can do. Um, I, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, basically like uh, pennies per lesson or yens per lesson, I should say. Is that right? All right. So can I just check, is there a free version? I thought there was a free version, but is, is there yeah. one available? Yeah, there is. Um, there is. Okay. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the pricing section here. So if you go to the, she got so many, uh, it always goes wild when I try and do these guys here. But yeah, if I go to, uh, where is my pricing here? It's going to be on three. I don't want this guy here. Move this over here. Yeah, if you go to um, download, there's a free version. So download for Windows. And it's, it gives you two channels. And there's a little, you know, Medicam watermark. But, you know, for, for even just having two channels, that's basically the equivalent of what Zoom is doing. You've got your screen share, and then you've got your, your webcam. So, no, just having two channels to play around with on the free version, I think it's, uh, it's well worth worth the time to, to figure it out. Okay, and just one last question, sorry, um, from Erico. With the um, mirrored view that we have, for example, with writing on, um, on Manicam, yeah. how can we uh, switch out that problem? 
Uh, so with mirroring, you have basically two different things going on. You've got Zoom can mirror and you've got ManyCam can mirror. So basically you can do a mirror, mirror, and then uh, on the wall, I guess the situation would be. Let's take a look here. So up in here, uh, if I'm looking at my ManyCam, sorry, it's just so weird when you look at this guy here, but um, all right. So let's take a look here. I've got my, I'm trying to find my ManyCam. It's here. Yeah. So when I try to show you these guys, show you guys these things, they disappear. Ah, here it is. Okay, let me get rid of all my ink. So over here on your ManyCam window at the top, there's this little um, uh, magnifying glass with a plus. When you click it, now you've got some options. I can rotate my camera. Um, I can flip it, uh, and I can do the screen mirroring. So and now I look at my student preview cam, and I notice that uh, none of the text is legible. So I probably would say uh, let's avoid that. But if you happen to have, say, Zoom, because Zoom also has the same features, right? So when you go down here to video and you go to video settings, you can mirror my video. And now it's backwards. So I, you know what? Uh, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but for my first like two lessons, I think every single uh, lesson or, you know, every single thing I showed, hey guys, let's write C A T, and it was backwards. And like, you know, I just didn't know because I didn't have that student I view camera. So yeah, that if you have a if you're watching your own lesson as a student, you'll know exactly what the students are seeing. Um, there's so many ways to to fix the mirror issue, whether it's in Zoom or in ManyCam. So those are uh, the two ways to do that. I see. <laughs> Eddie All right, that's uh, everything for my questions. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so then, just last but not least, uh, I just wanted to show you guys some stuff because we're we're so excited and like stoked on this, but. We do adult lessons as well, like adult conversation classes. And we're like, what are we going to do for online classes? And basically, we came up with uh, the same you know, idea. But we built this 30-page, uh, this kind of conversation pack. So I could say, today is, uh, whatever today is, is Thursday. Uh, today's date, I can type that in there so that the students can have a record of that. Uh, and then we jump in. So today, guys, we're going to talk about generations. Woo! And so maybe we'll start with a warm-up question. And uh, I can find my mini cam window here. Um, because I'm showing you everything, my, my windows get moved around here. All right, we're good. So uh, I can, <laughs> so let's get the uh, marker off. Okay, so what is something that was popular when you were in high school, junior high school? So then I'd go around and um, you know ask each student, all right, so uh, Aaron, what was something popular when you were in high school? Uh, it was the Pokemon card craze. Oh, yeah, Pokemon. And for me, it was, I'm a little older than you, uh, it was Snapple Lids. <laughs> Did you guys ever come okay. with Snapple Lids and make these like really loud lips, lids, uh, these loud poppers? Uh, anyway, so we can have this warm up discussion. We can go around the table or around the, the Zoom. And for adult classes, it's a completely different uh, experience. Obviously, I want to talk to the students and Adults don't usually cry and run around and eat and um, mess up the lesson. So adults, uh, everything I've said about our kids' classes is just out the window. But these are, are good. So we start with a warm-up question, and then maybe we would uh, jump in. Uh, <coughs> let's talk about generations. So we have a topic um, for each of our, our journal packs. We try to use these for about four lessons. Uh, maybe we'd have a, a, a reading, uh, and they could listen to me, and then we could read it. Uh, and then maybe we have some, you know, vocabulary that, you know, came out um, during in the readings. We say, hey, okay, what's a generation? What's Generation X? Uh, okay, so a group of people that, um, you know, grew up or lived in the same time period. And um, these text boxes are really nice because they auto size themselves. Uh, you might be able to do this with, you know, uh, whatever these, you know, software people are using. But uh, I've just found PDFs to be really, you know, just slick like that. Then maybe we'll have some uh, questions we can ask uh, in the, the lesson, we'll go around the room and ask you know, uh, each student, what generation are you part of? What are some characteristics? Uh, and these, um, this version is not editable, but we can make the template. Then maybe we'd have a agree or disagree uh, activity. Um, do you agree that everyone in generation X is good at using technology? Or uh, sending text messages to people is better than calling, agree or disagree? So we can have a conversation, a lot of discourse using these. And, you know, I'll maybe, you know, zoom back in or pan, uh, change the channels back and forth like this a little bit. 
but we can really just keep the uh, the focus and the attention on this uh, this uh, this resource here. So let's see. Uh, here's the answer. What was the question? Uh, MTV stands for music television. Oh, okay. What does uh, MTV stand for? So yeah, you know, we've basically taken all of our favorite activities and built them into this cool PDF pack that, you know, each of these, if you spend 10, 20 minutes on them, then this is, is good for three or four lessons easily. Some more kind of uh, mini readings, a true or false quiz, uh, goes on and on. Um, over the hill, we've got some uh, idioms. Uh, okay, 40 years old. Uh, let's use that as an example. All right, Jeremy is uh, over the hill this year. Uh, over the hill <laughs> this year, I just turned 40, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what is the meaning of this? So we got some slang we can throw in. What's dude mean? What's my bad mean? Um, at the end, you can say, hey, dude, sorry, my bad. That's a sweet ride. Um, and then finally, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm just going through this really quickly. But uh, yeah, let's look at the picture and let's take turns kind of describing, um, you know, what can you see? Here are some ideas. There is a picture, or, you know, there is a man, there are two men, he is, she is. Uh, and you know, this might be good for junior high school classes, advanced students. And then finally, let's wrap it up with a, you know, something to think about, write a journal for next week, or, um, you know, here's a question we're gonna talk about at the beginning next time for warm up. Let's talk about that. So that's one uh, really cool resource that we have. And then I, I just cannot stop making um, these PDF, like interactive, like just fun things. So this is my newest creation from this week. Um, these are our true false quizzes. And here, basically, you go to setup. I think everyone can see that. And you just plug in all of the questions and answers and just write in, is it true or false? And then you hit finished. And let's start our quiz. All right. So uh, you guys can participate if you want. Uh, let's see. Oranges are orange. True or false? Ooh, is this a loaded question? I think it's a good one. All right. Um, that's true. Sweet. You get one point. Of course, they're orange. So this is basically, um, you know, the answers that I, I filled in. So bananas are sometimes purple. Never. Yay. So anyway, um, this is good for, for young kids, old kids, adults. Uh, everyone loves a good true false quiz. And again, you, you write all the questions, you write all the answers. So yeah, uh, the, the simpler our resources are, the simpler our, our lesson flow is, I think the better we're going to, um, you know, the better experience we're going to be able to create with these online lessons. So uh, whether or not you're using PDFs, just the ideas. Uh, I hope the idea of uh, even just muting your students and trying that, it's really awkward. It's really hard to get used to. But once you get in the hang of it, um, if you watch the recorded videos, it's a better product that more people can watch later on and um, get a lot out of. Uh, you know, in my opinion, we, we might, you know, you try this for a while and, and get some feedback from students and, and, you know, change course a little bit. But so far, after three weeks of, of trying this out, this is where we're at. So great. Uh, if there are no other questions, Aaron, how are we doing? No, we're all good. All right. Well, um, I was trying to keep this a little bit slower paced and shorter, but I guess we always have so much to talk about. So I want to say thanks to everyone uh, for joining us. I've recorded the whole video and I will have it online uh, if, yeah, probably by tomorrow noonish. Um, and yeah, if you have any follow up questions, you send me a message on, on Facebook or uh, I think we've got a uh, screen somewhere around here. Yes, there it is. So um, info at bingobongokids.com, uh, you know, give us a shout. And if you have an idea of, you know, some resource that you, uh, would, you think would be awesome, We'll, we'll probably be able to make it pretty quickly if it's, you know, along the lines of what we've been making so far. So uh, let us know. All right. Well, uh, thanks again to our co-host, Aaron, for uh, rocking the- Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, <laughs> the questions and all of the uh, co-host responsibilities and uh, everyone else. Uh, if, if people are interested and want to keep, you know, doing these kind of presentations, um, I'll try to make them shorter, and if you throw out questions, um, we can have a list of topics that we talk about each time, uh, and we can do this uh, even weekly if you guys want. It's, uh, it's really, if you guys want to hear it, we, we want to talk about it. So, All right, then. Well, everyone, have a great evening. Good luck with your online classes. Wash your hands. Bye. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> see you. All right, see Bye. you.